Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, there's three pieces of medical diagnostic equipment that I think should be in every home. They're relatively cheap these days, and it's really a good idea to have access to these in the home. The first is a simple uh, thermometer, a temperature probe, particularly useful if you have children in the house. And these electronic ones are relatively cheap these days and uh, fairly accurate. And I have no vested interest in any of these products. Many are available. Um, the next is, of course, is the oxygen saturation probe, a uh, very simple device that just goes on your finger. And the third one it's worth having in the home is, is some sort of blood pressure device. So that means we can take our temperature, uh, our, our heart rate and oxygen saturations and our blood pressure. Very useful to know about. We can learn about these for ourselves and also it means we can record them. So when we do need to call the doctor, we can record, record these measures and give him accurate information to help him uh, make an assessment. Now let's look at each of these in turn now. I think we'll start off with the, uh, this simple um, temperature probe here really simple to use you just turn it on and uh, take your temperature and, and there we go 36.4 uh, I normally try in quite a few different locations it's sometimes good to point at these nice big arteries in your neck there um, that's uh, 36.3 which again is, is, is perfectly normal and there's attachments for the ear as well whatever uh, reading you get that's the highest is the most useful and if the temperature is increased, the most likely cause of that is that you've got some sort of infection, some sort of fever, what we call a febrile response, indicating there may well be uh, an infection. Now, the next one to look at is the oxygen saturation probe. That simply goes on a finger, and any finger will, will do. And uh, you get a reading within a fairly short period of time. And... Uh, well, that'll pop up any second and there we see that my heart rate is currently uh, 81 beats per minute and my uh, oxygen saturations are currently uh, 98 to 99 percent oxygen saturations sometimes your heart rate settles down a bit after a few seconds that's down to 80 79 this is because it's taking the average over a period of time and we're also getting a pulse trace on this one here. So we see my heart rate is around about the 80 mark, 82, 81. Okay, that's fine. And my oxygen saturations are 99, which are quite normal and, and acceptable. We normally say a normal heart rate is around about 72 if you're at rest, but anything between 60 and 100 is normally considered uh, acceptable. Now, the, ne the next one I want to look at is, the, is the, the blood pressure machine. Now, again, many manufacturers are available. Very simple to use. Uh, there's actually a, a line on there that tells you where the, the artery should go. The, the artery is actually, um, the, the artery is actually, it's sort of uh, towards the, the medial part of your, uh, your arm there. That's where the artery is. In fact, if you, if you put your finger on there, you can, you can normally uh, feel it. That's called the brachial artery. But these cuffs are really quite forgiving, but that goes roughly over the artery like that. And uh, you can just tighten it up. And then all you do is you press the button. So the machine automatically blows up the cuff, increasing the pressure of the air in the cuff around the arm. And that equates to the pressure of the blood in the artery. And it will give us two pressures. The first pressure is called the systolic pressure. That is when the heart is actively contracting. The second pressure it will give us is called the diastolic pressure. That is when the heart is relaxing in between beats and the blood pressure is maintained by the elasticity, the elastic recoil of the arteries. So we can see my systolic is 126 here and my diastolic is 84 and it also says 74 beats per minute and that is it blood pressure is recorded so here we can see my heart rate and oxygen saturations in real time my beats per minute is a 71 at the moment and my oxygen saturations are 99 which is uh, absolutely fine and we can also see we're getting this uh, this uh, pulse waveform here which is also quite useful 
you can check on the regularity of the pulse to some extent from that. So remarkably simple to use, remarkably simple to record these uh, findings and relate them to healthcare professionals as needed. So just a little bit about what these results mean. The heart rate's important. So if you have been exercising or if you are in a, an emergency situation or you're anxious or you're excited, of course, your heart rate can go up. If you're at rest, it can go down. And there's quite a variety in heart rates. If the heart rate is very low, we call that a bradycardia. If it's very high, we call that a tachycardia. But find out what your normal is in various circumstances. Oxygen saturations uh, can vary depending on the situation as well. Mine sometimes go as low as 94, but typically there are 98, 99, 97, those kind of values. But again, find out what's normal for you. Some people with chronic lung disease can have lower oxygen saturations. An important proviso with these is that they don't work after people have been exposed to a lot of smoke and carbon monoxide. So there's no point using these if someone's been in a fire or indeed if someone smokes a lot of cigarettes, it can give it a give an artificially high reading. And of course, it doesn't work with nail varnish. So if someone's got nail varnish on, uh, there's no point having it reading through the nail varnish. You need to put it on uh, sideways <laughs> like that. Uh, temperature, if the temperature is low, then someone can be hypothermic if they've been exposed to cold water or cold environments. Uh, if, if the temperature is higher, th that can be caused by hot environments and dehydration, but very commonly it's caused by fever. So if someone's in a normal type of environment and their temperature is high, we call that a pyrexia. And that would normally indicate some sort of infection, whether it be a viral infection or a bacterial infection or in the tropics, even something like uh, malaria. So, um, again, very, very easy to, to diagnose these things, indicating that something is wrong. I mean, the real thing is just to take yours regularly, find out what you normally are, find out what your family members normally are, and then you recognise if there's a difference. Now, in terms of blood pressure, if the blood pressure is low, we call that hypotension. If the blood pressure is high, we call that a uh, hypertension. Now, the main thing for the main reason for taking blood pressure for most of us um, is that high blood pressure very often doesn't give any clinical features. You can have high blood pressure and feel perfectly fine. But the point is it's damaging your organs, it's damaging your, can damage your kidneys, it will damage the blood vessels, it can lead to the clogging up of the arteries. So basically, if the blood pressure is high, we need to know about it. Then there's quite a few lifestyle factors we can do to lower blood pressure, like losing weight, reducing or stopping alcohol, increasing exercise. For some people, considering the amount of salt and potassium in the diet, uh, some people need to cut down on salt and increase the potassium. Some people need to take more magnesium or sometimes, of course, blood pressure medications might be required from uh, prescribed by your healthcare provider. So blood pressure is, is really preventing long term complications. But no reason not to have all of these things. Know what your physiological norms are. Know what your family's physiological norms are. Know what your children's physiological norms are. And then you're equipped to recognise the difference and report that quickly and accurately uh, to a healthcare provider so they can make informed decisions as what the best thing to do is. It's very cheap. I have no vested interest in any of these. Uh, these are just ones I happen to have uh, at home. Um, many brands are available. Do check it out. They're relatively inexpensive. I mean, I think this costs about the Sats probe costs about twelve pounds now. Um, they're really quite cheap. I think this thermometer was round about the same, round about fifteen pounds. I think probably roughly the same in dollars. And this this particular blood pressure machine was about uh, forty five pounds. I think. But it's a one-off investment. It should last for years, and of course, it will do for all members of the of the family. So well worth having in and thank you for watching.